Good morning to you. Mark Sutton with HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Monday, July 3rd, 2017. A lot to talk about today. Let's jump in and look at what's happening in the eastern Pacific. A couple of areas of interest here, both of them well off the coast of Mexico. So really no worries for land areas. And um, the westernmost system here is Invest Area 94E, and I think that's the westernmost area. Yep, it looks like it. You know, this one's going to move in that direction. Uh, but this one has 30% chance in the next 48 hours, 50% chance of development at day five, and as such, it has been designated as Eastern Pacific Invest Area 94. There it is there. And you can see that the general idea of the track guidance is for a turn off to the west and away from areas such as the Baja and mainland Mexico, so no worries for you folks down there. And the modeling is pretty meager here, really not showing much in the way of development. Um, you never know, it could become a hurricane. Again, these eastern Pacific uh, systems tend to surprise you from time to time. However, this year, water temperatures are colder out that way than we have seen in recent years, and uh, the systems have tended to struggle uh, because of that. So we'll see. I just don't see this doing too much. And even if it does, again, it's going to be quite a ways away from land areas, so no big worries there. In the Atlantic Basin, we do have now newly designated overnight Invest Area 94L. And remember, they go through these numbers, 90 through 99, and the letter L for Atlantic to designate an area as an area of interest or an area of further investigation. And we in the weather world just refer to that as Invest Area, in this case, 94L. And they'll use those numbers again. They just keep going 90 through 99 throughout the season when we get an area that's worth uh, a little bit more attention paid to it. So here's the, you know, what you would look at as the center, I guess you would say, of the broad overall low pressure area. Forecast to move off to the west-northwest with time. This is moving very slowly. It's, it's basically stationary. And that is very unusual in the tropics this time of year. Normally we see these tropical waves really moving fast across the deep tropics here, anywhere from 10 to 15 and sometimes 25 and even 30 miles per hour, especially as they get into the western part of the tropical Atlantic towards the Caribbean Sea, as you have very strong trade winds usually blasting through the area. So for this to be basically stationary is very unusual to see and probably an indication of the type of season that we're going to have uh, that we don't have really really strong high pressure in the eastern Atlantic moving things along at a brisk pace not allowing them to develop if they're moving too fast they usually can't converge and gather themselves and try to form something so uh, the morning satellite shot here the visible satellite uh, leading edge of some Saharan air coming in towards the Lesser Antilles. So if you're in Barbados this morning, maybe a little bit rainy with some showers and thunderstorms. And that entire sort of front push here, like a snowplow, uh, pushing snow ahead of it, building up, uh, will move towards the islands here. So areas, even the U.S. British Virgin Islands down through Guadalupe, St. Lucia, and then maybe Trinidad and Tobago would get in on that action. But again, this is just the leading edge of some Saharan air and maybe a tropical wave embedded in here with some broad turning, but no big deal. It's not going to develop into a tropical storm or anything like that. Just your typical tropical wave passage. So if you're visiting that area, it'll be in and out over the next 24 hours. In the meantime, this is our area, Invest 94L, well to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands or Cabo Verde Islands, whichever way you prefer it. And the rest of the Atlantic, nice and quiet this morning, upper level low spinning here over parts of the greater Antilles, and that cold air in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere over that very warm water leads to instability uh, galore, and so you have some pop-up showers and thunderstorms, but otherwise really no other signs of development. So our attention is faced, faced placed on 94L. Uh, and you look at the vorticity signature, it's still elongated down here, but it'll eventually get its act together. Look at this over interior Africa, a big bullseye of energy there. And if we look at the broader satellite shot, um, you really don't see much over Africa itself in terms of convection, 
but there is a lot of energy here, as we saw with the vorticity signature. And then here's 94L over the Atlantic, uh, embedded in sort of this monsoon trough, sort of like a grapevine of development down there, uh, moisture. And this is well removed from the Saharan dust and dry, more stable air to its north. So this will slowly gather and then move off to the west-northwest. More than likely not going to impact the islands. We'll show uh, the GFS here in just a moment. I just thought I would point that out. And on here you can really see the leading edge of that Saharan air uh, outbreak in this tropical wave out ahead of that, that surge in the Saharan air headed towards the islands. Uh, these tools are just amazing. I love all the different perspectives that we can have to track this stuff. And one of those are the sea surface temperature anomaly charts. And normally I do this update in the afternoon on Mondays when we look at the NOAA NESDIS um, sea surface temperature anomalies, and those get updated around 1.15, 1.30 in the afternoon on Mondays and Thursdays. But the Reynolds method here, which is just a different way of deriving these products, this is a weekly average, whereas the NOAA NESDIS is more of a snapshot for today, uh, etc. And so this updated this morning, so I figured I would show you this one to kind of get my point across. Uh, this valid on the 1st of July, so it's a weekly average. And you see that the eastern Atlantic here, especially uh, up towards the, you know, even in the subtropics here off of Portugal, very warm compared to average, and then off the coast of Africa extending out into the central Atlantic uh, a half a degree to a degree Celsius above the long-term average, very warm in the western Atlantic. And our tropical wave, by the way, is located eh, roughly in here somewhere. And water temperatures there, quite a bit above the long-term average. Notice, too, that even the Gulf is starting to fill in again, um, a large chunk in the central Gulf where Cindy impacted and stirred things up. But this will fill in, and the Gulf of Mexico will be at least where it should be, if not slightly above normal by the time we get probably just a couple weeks from now. So if we look at the various uh, intensity guidance for 94L, Really not going to focus on the track models yet because it's still brand new. But I wanted to show you this. Uh, intensity is pretty aggressive, at least from the statistical model here. The ships, which literally means statistical hurricane intensity prediction, and it actually has an S on it for scheme. Uh, it literally means that. It's called the ships model. Statistical hurricane intensity prediction scheme. It's just funny when something has the word scheme on it. But... I digress. It's uh, pretty aggressive here. Probably seeing uh, low wind shear values, warm sea surface temperatures. And so it, it, can, you know, it has those uh, input parameters. It knows that, quote unquote. And so it says, okay, those things being the case, uh, low shear, warm water, yeah, tropical wave, sure, it'll probably go on to become a hurricane. And some of the other modeling, again, this is very limited because this came out in the overnight hours shortly after it was designated as 94L. Um, you know, the overall idea, if we look at the blue one here, which I will highlight in yellow, the IVCN, which is the intensity consensus, shows steady strengthening. Will that happen? Eh, we'll see. I think it has quite a bit going for it, this system. So we'll see what happens. Let's go back and take a look at this real quick. <clears throat> the GFS, 0Z zero, zero run from last night. What are we looking at? Well, this is the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, and our tropical disturbance is located down here, 94L, and you can see this broad overall turning down here, and it's you know like a little seed packet waiting to blossom in the moisture that's come off of Africa as of late with these tropical waves, and this is the big old high pressure sitting out over the Atlantic, east coast of the U.S. over here, and the west coast of Africa there. So, as I have shown in the last couple of days, I want you to keep your eye on this area through here and then around like this over the next few days as I put this into motion. We'll make it in yellow here to make it a little easier. And we'll do this and then watch what happens. So, this is um, the, again, the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere moving out basically every hour for 120 hours. So, we're going to have 120 frames here. And you see that it slowly starts to gather itself, really not moving fast. And again, I think that is remarkable, that it's just sitting there. Something stationary like that, 
in the deep tropics in early July. Ah, oh, man, it really is amazing to see that. And you notice it moves on off to the west-northwest with time. The ridging to its north, really not that strong, so it's probably going to miss the islands, and you can see that there as we get to the end of the five-day period. I'll make this go a little faster. More than likely, the ridge of high pressure to the north up there, and I'll draw on it here, uh, will be shallow enough in, in the atmosphere that this will not be moving to the west, basically due west. 270 is due west. This will probably have a heading more like you know 285 or 290, something like that, maybe a little less than that if you know your compass headings. And therefore, I think you folks in the islands are going to be fine from any direct impacts. However, because it is stationary, we can't say that with 100% certainty. Uh, you know, if the ridge were to try to strengthen, yeah, we'll see. This is out over the Atlantic. There's no upper air data from weather balloons over the Atlantic basin uh, and the middle of the ocean for obvious reasons. So we'll see. But at least for now, it looks like it'll move off closer to that 20 degrees north latitude line, which is right there, and generally leave the islands alone. From there, you know, yep, we want to watch this on the east coast in Bermuda, certainly. But it's still too soon to have any specific, you know, oh, yeah, it's definitely going to turn out to sea, or it's going to do this, or it's going to do that. We have so much time to watch this. It could be 10 days before we have a definitive, uh, at least, good guess. Is that even a, how do you, that's like an oxymoron, a definitive good guess, right? But you know the drill. These things are going to evolve over time, the different way the pattern evolves over North America and the North Atlantic, we will see what happens. we got plenty of time to watch it. It does look like it will go on to become the next tropical depression, and if it becomes a storm, it will be named Dawn, and I'm sure the Internet will absolutely melt down and have fun with that one, and I'm going to leave it alone for obvious reasons. We don't really do politics here, so we'll let the jokes write themselves on Twitter and elsewhere if this does, in fact, I mean, eventually we're going to have a tropical storm, Don. We might as well have it be this one and get done with it. Um, but, you know, the overall bottom line, for me, the biggest takeaway, early July, deep tropic development, yeah, this is really going to be a sign now that we cannot ignore. Brett, not an anomaly, because you followed it by, you know, what's soon to be Don here in the next few days in the open tropics like this in early July. I think the hurricane season is going to be very busy, and I think this is yet another sign of that. All right, well, that is it for me for today. This was early this morning. Usually these are in the afternoon, as I mentioned before. Going to be heading out with the family to enjoy a little family time at the beach. And so uh, that's it. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, of course. It's not like I'm going away forever, but that's why I'm doing this in the fairly early morning hour, at least for me anyway. So have a great rest of your Monday if you're doing any Fourth of July stuff out there. Be real careful, all right? We want you back to be able to watch these in the future and to see how the story ends for this upcoming system, right? you got to be safe so you can at least do that. So be safe out there. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for your time and your attention. And I'll be back with you again tomorrow afternoon.